So today I'm talking about a P2181 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. So what is a P2181 code? Well, it's a cooling system performance. And so what does this mean? Well, basically the engine has a temperature range that's supposed to be operating in. And if it's going outside of this, if it's running too hot or if it's running too cold, then the computer is going to see this and it's going to send out this P2181 code. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And one thing to note about this P2181 code is that if you are getting other codes, for example, if you're also getting like an engine coolant temperature sensor code or something like that, then be sure to pay attention to that because that can help point you to what the problem is. And so what would be some possible causes of a P2181 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is low coolant level. If the coolant level is low, then the cooling system is not going to be able to work and cool down the engine like it's supposed to. So it's a good idea to go check the coolant level and be sure it's correct. If it's not correct, you could add some in until it is. One thing about this is why the coolant level is low. So for example, if the engine overheated, sometimes it could blow out all its coolant. So just adding some in when the coolant level is low may or may not work because there might be something else going on on why the coolant level is low. But the first thing to go and do is check the coolant and be sure it's at the right level. And the next thing that could cause this is a bad thermostat. And basically a thermostat is what regulates the temperature inside the engine. And so if it gets stuck closed or it gets stuck open, then that could cause problems. These thermostats are closed when the engine's cold, but then as the engine warms up, it's going to slowly open and let fluid flow past it into the radiator, which then is going to circulate through the whole engine and through the radiator and keep the whole engine cool. But when these get stuck closed, it could cause the engine to overheat. And if they get stuck open, the engine's going to run too cold. It's not going to warm up to where it's supposed to be. And so that's going to cause problems. There's some different ways to go about checking to see if that thermostat's failed. The most common thing that goes wrong with these thermostats is that they get stuck closed. Oh, and so the side on the engine is going to get really hot, but then no fluid is going to be flowing past it. So the other side is going to be colder than the side of the engine. So you can use an infrared temperature gun to, to check what the temperature is on each side of it once the engine warms up and gets hot. I made some videos on this. I'll put a link down below if you need to check that out. But the next thing that could cause this is that that thermostat either got stuck shut or it got stuck open. And the next thing that could cause this is there's some kind of issue going on with the cooling fans. They're not spinning for some reason. They're not cooling the engine for some reason. And so again, there's some different ways to go about troubleshooting this. When there is a cooling fan issue, usually you'll know because the cooling fan won't be spinning at all. If it's spinning all the time, then you know they're working. If you can't hear no spinning and the vehicle overheats when you're at like stop signs or like a stoplight or in heavy traffic or something like that. But then when you're moving, like you're going down the freeway, you're doing like 50, 60 miles an hour and the engine stays cool. Then that's a sign of a bad fan because these cooling fans are only really needed when you're not moving or you're not moving very fast. If you're moving at least 30, 40 miles an hour down the road and not stopping and the engine's not overheating, but then you come to a stop and it overheats, then that can point to a cooling fan. If you do think it's a cooling fan issue, keep in mind that these are on relays, they're on fuses. A bad engine coolant temperature sensor can also affect these. So just because the cooling fan is not spinning doesn't mean that the fan itself is bad. Be sure to check the fuses and the relays and different things like this. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad cooling fan. And the next thing that could cause this is a bad engine coolant temperature sensor. And basically this coolant temperature sensor is just reporting back to the computer what the temperature of the engine is. And so if there's some kind of problem with it, then there might not be no problem with the engine, but the computer just thinks there is since it's getting bad information. And these engine coolant temperature sensors are what's called a thermistor, which basically is a resistor whose resistance changes as the temperature changes. And so voltage is going to be going to it on one pin. And then depending on how hot the engine is, the resistance value is going to change. And the computer is going to be able to read this and it could do its calculations and know what the temperature of the engine is. So you can use a multimeter to test it. You can look up what the rated resistance is supposed to be at a set temperature and check to see if it's good. I made some videos on this. Again, I'll put some links down below if you need to check that out. If you have an OBD2 scan tool, you can go into data stream or live data, depending on your scan tool, and find the engine coolant temperature sensor inside of there. And then just see what the temperature says. If it's hugely off, so for example, say the engine's cold, but it's saying like 700 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that, then you know very likely there's some kind of issue going on with that engine coolant temperature sensor. Also keep in mind, there could be more than one engine coolant temperature sensor. Depending on the vehicle, there could be more than one. So if you do go to work on your vehicle, be sure to get a diagram to know exactly what's going on, where they're located, if there is more than one, what the voltage is going to them, different things like this. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad engine coolant temperature sensor. And also keep in mind that there's anything wrong with the wiring going to that engine coolant temperature sensor. There's like an open, there's a short, a bad connection, something like this. Then that's going to cause the same symptoms as a bad temperature sensor. 
So you can't use a multimeter, go and check it. Usually these get like five volts going to them. But like I said, be sure to get a wiring diagram or schematics for your particular vehicle to know for sure. But it is very common for these to have five volts going to them. And then you're gonna have a signal wire going back to the computer. And if you do think there's some kind of issue going on inside the wiring, again, be sure to check the fuses, be sure to check the relays, be sure they're all good. Because if there's a blown fuse, a bad relay, anything like this, then that's going to cause problems. But the last thing on the list is going to be a bad engine coolant temperature sensor or the wiring going to it. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P2181 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.